when, when we talk about layers of information, you know, you, you, can, you can look at a signal or you can look at some message that's being sent, but eventually you get to the top and at the top is desire. Mm -hmm. There is a will for something to happen. Mm -hmm. you know, computers are not willful. Mm -hmm. right. Living things are. Right. There, is, there is something that living things have that computers do not have. And so at the very least, at the very least, there's an algorithm that drives this. Mm -hmm. But using the word algorithm might even be selling it short. It's mm -hmm. like the meta program. But just to stay with you, you're still claiming that that, in theory, should all be inside. It's all in the there. code. Yeah. OK. So it's yeah. a matter of understanding how it's getting encoded in there. Right. Does it make sense to you that there's enough bits in that code to support all of that intelligence? Well, apparently there are. It would appear to and, be. And the fact that, that you know, 750 megabytes is enough is just absolutely remarkable. It's remarkable that it, it's enough to build a human body. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you take all the plans for a Honda Civic and put them on 750 meg megabytes? I doubt it. <laughs> Okay. I doubt it. I don't know for sure, but I don't know. I, 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 bet, I bet some of the plans just for an engine take up more than that, yeah. you know? So, so this is, this is, there's a whole theory of intelligent evolution, and we can make predictions about what we'll discover. So you're saying it could be scientific then? Absolutely. We, this is, we can make test, all kinds of testable hypotheses from this. Okay, and one of them is, is that there is an algorithm that rearranges these pieces and, and pushes towards higher and higher levels of speciation. Now, I understand this working at the, you know, you're using the example of a protozoan, right? Right. Uh, and it really is a single cell. Right. But if you have a multicell or a human, uh, it's not just a matter of rearranging genes in order to get, you know, a more advanced uh, being, you know, from going from an insect to a human, right? You got to get. How, how does that work? How does that analogy apply here? Well, you know, what's interesting is how much, how much of our DNA we actually have in common with insects. Right. 80, you know, eighty or ninety percent, right? Right. It's like it's all the same raw materials, and then. You know, and then, but at a very high level, you know, the, the difference between an insect and a bear is at a very high level in DNA. It's, it's, not in, it's not in the proteins, it's not in the amino acids, it's in, it's in the arrangement of all those things, right? You know, the difference between a, you know, a, a Chevy Chevette and a Mercedes, you know, they're, they're both made out of metal. Right. So this is a theory of evolution. Yes. And it's a theory of evolution that doesn't require information to be somehow created through random acts. Is that well, true? Well, information is not created by random acts. But in the... In the and we're not invoking that. Okay, no, in, your, in this theory. Right. 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 We are saying that the program is in there from the beginning, and that's why we have evolution. Okay, so the evolution was programmed into life. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, it's and, and I prefer that to a theory of, well, first got introduced the plants and then got introduced the animals and then got introduced man. At, I, at its own singularity at every point of the way in this fact, right? Right. I prefer <laughs> one singularity to a whole bunch of them. Okay, why? Because it gives us something to study. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about all kinds of things. But I'm at least putting out a hypothesis that can be tested. 